Office FX. Hello there, this is Xiao, and welcome to the 15th episode of my 17 part series on getting a great vocal sound. This series is a crash course on best practices to help you get good results in your home studio from performance to recording to mixing. Previously, I explained how to use an equalizer to fix any tonal problems with your vocal. If you haven't seen this video yet, go check it out. This time, I'll be introducing you to the second most important mixing plugin, the compressor. Again, lots to cover, expect a long video. So let's get right into it. In my video on sound concepts, I explained how a sound's volume or amplitude is measured in decibels. However, there's more to amplitude than just measuring it. Except for the most basic sound waves, all sounds experience changes in their volume over time. These changes in volume are called dynamics. Some sounds are more dynamic than others. For example, this piano melody has more changes in volume than this organ melody even though they're playing the same melody. Indeed, even a single key hit on this piano has dynamics, from the sudden volume spike at the beginning called the transient, to the tone-carrying body of the sound, to the fade-out at the end called the tail. Many acoustic sounds also have this dynamic structure, including vocals. So how does this relate to mixing? Well, you can actually control the dynamics of an instrument. Which brings us to... Compressors. Normally, when you want to control the loudness of a sound, you use its volume control. However, even though you can set the volume to change over time, it's very difficult and tedious to do so. A compressor is an automatic volume controller that can quickly and easily manipulate the dynamics of audio. There are three main reasons to use a compressor. First, it can be used to keep a sound from getting too loud or too quiet in your mix. Second, it can be used to alter the shape of individual hits of an instrument. This is usually for things like drums. Finally, a compressor, like an EQ, is a powerful sound shaping tool that can drastically change an instrument's character, especially when used at extreme settings. I'll get into some of these more extreme uses of compression in later videos. But for now, I'll be focusing on the first usage, evening out volume levels. So here we have our mix about pizza. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. As you heard, while the vocal is pretty even already, there are some places where it was noticeably louder or quieter than the rest. We can control these points using a compressor. Here it is on one of the effect slots of the vocal. Now this particular plugin is actually a combination compressor, limiter, saturator, noise gate, but I'll be leaving those other things off for now and just focusing on the compressor part. However, even with just the compressor, it looks pretty intimidating. But lucky for you, a lot of it doesn't matter. All you need to worry about are these five parameters right here, because these controls are the same for almost all compressors, and they're all you need to compress a vocal. That and the meter up here, of course. So let's dig in. A compressor controls volume by measuring how loud the audio is, and then turning it down once it gets to a certain loudness. As such, the first control to know about is the threshold, which determines the volume point where the compressor starts working. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni sausage. As you can see in here, the threshold is set, but nothing's happening. That's because the compressor doesn't know how much to compress by once the audio crosses the threshold. We set this using the ratio control. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite. And now the compressor starts working. The ratio can be a little confusing, so I'll just say that the higher the ratio, the more compression is applied. I usually set it to 3 to 1 on vocals, though. Okay, so as you can hear, we are compressing the vocal now. However, it's starting to sound a bit muffled and weird. We can manage this using the attack and release controls. Attack controls how quickly the compressor starts applying compression once the audio crosses the threshold, and release controls how quickly it stops compressing once the audio goes back below the threshold. Now you may be thinking, why not just have it going as fast as possible? Well, as you can hear, My favorite 
it's a toppy. If the attack time is set too fast, it cuts off the transience of the words, which makes the vocal sound muffled. My favorite pizza toppings are pepper. And if you make it too slow, the compressor basically ignores the vocal because it's going by too quickly for the compressor to react. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage. I've generally found that between 20 to 50 milliseconds works best for the attack on a vocal compressor. As for the release, this one has a bit more flexibility. You set the release so that the compressor follows the movement of the vocal. If the release is too slow, it creates weird pumping sounds as the compression overflows onto the transient of the next word. And if it's too fast, it may cause distortion. So right around the middle. But honestly, release is something you set by ear. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza toppings. Now what about this meter up here? Well, this white line is what's known as a gain reduction meter, which shows, in dB, how much compression is being applied. It determines this based on the combination of the threshold, ratio, attack, and release. You have to manipulate all four of these to get the appropriate amount of gain reduction. Almost every compressor has a gain reduction meter. My favorite. Here's a different compressor's meter. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. The red bar here, that's the, com that's the gain reduction meter. Lastly, you may have noticed that the vocal is overall much quieter now. To fix this, we use the last control, makeup gain also called output gain or just gain in this case. Makeup gain is used to turn up the overall volume of the now compressed vocal. And that's the beauty of a compressor. You turn down the louder parts, and then when you turn everything back up, this boosts the volume of the quieter parts, making the vocal much more even. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni, sausage, and bacon. My favorite pizza toppings are pepperoni sauce. Now you may have noticed that I was turning the compressor on and off when setting the gain. This is very important. For most plugins, but especially for compressors, you have to make sure that the plugin isn't making the audio noticeably louder or quieter. This is because your brain naturally perceives louder sounds as sounding better, and quieter ones as sounding worse. There are lots of studies about this, you can just Google it. Therefore, by making sure you apply your effects with zero net gain change, or no noticeable change in volume, you'll be able to hear how your plugins are actually changing the audio so that you can accurately tell if it's an improvement. Now here are some general compressor pointers. First, if the compressor sounds weird, check the attack and release times. These controls are the most important for how transparent or easy to hear your compression is. They won't solve every problem, but they're a good place to start. Second, ask yourself if your audio even needs compression. Nine times out of ten, your vocal will benefit from some compression, but there are many instruments out there that don't need it. Third, don't over compress. While vocals can generally handle more more compression than other acoustic instruments, there is such a thing as too much compression. Your goal is to control dynamics, not completely squash them. Ultimately set compression by ear, but if you want a guideline, 1 to 3 dB of gain reduction is light compression, and anything above 6 dB is considered heavy compression. Fourth, experiment with the order of the effects in your signal path. Placing a compressor before an EQ can sound very different from placing it after the EQ. I usually prefer to put EQs before compressors, but this isn't universal. 
Fifth, as with EQ, make compression decisions in the context of the mix, rather than in isolation. It's really hard to know how to control the dynamics of an instrument when there's nothing to compare it against. Finally, I want to reiterate the importance of applying your effects with zero net gain change. Make sure the audio coming out of an effect is as loud as the audio going into it, so that you're not tricking yourself into thinking your mix sounds better than it actually does. Anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about here. If you liked what you heard, please like, share and subscribe. If you want more information or have any questions about compressors, comment below. I'm always open for questions. And if you want to request a Vox FX tutorial, please send me a message. Remember, if it's talky, I can talk about it. As a quick aside, I just wanted to apologize for the long gap between Vox FX tutorials. I was in the process of moving to a new apartment and getting accustomed to a new job. It should be easy for me to get back in the routine of releasing a tutorial every other week. Speaking of which, in the next tutorial, I'll be discussing four special types of compressors and how to use them to improve your mixes. Until then, have fun and keep making sound. Box FX. Box FX.